slices. Pause. Same What's timbre up? every time. <laughs> same timbre. I was like, what did they think they were listening to the same episode over and over? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, they might. They every might. Every episode, they're like, oh, wait, this is the same thing. This is the mystery files, and this is an endless loop of time, 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 time. <laughs> Well, it's probably the same loop for them all the time because I have um the this video is sponsored by Stop. Anchor. <laughs> then they really don't know. And then it's that intro I have the little. Oh, is it the Benjamin's music, his thing he wrote, or is it something different? No, it is. It oh. is the thing he wrote. That little <laughs> instrumental, yeah. Yeah, look at him. Get oh, I don't time. think we've ever talked about that before. That that Benjamin instrumental wrote is that. His. He wrote that. He's a gem. Thank you, Benjamin. He's a little musician, I guess. Our producer. He's a producer and he's a yeah. musician and we love him. If you've looked at any of the info in our bio, he is now a producer for the show. He's credited he because he has helped us so much with this podcast. He has. Emotionally and physically and technically and yes. just everything. He gives us his pre-sonus uh, monitor thingamabob for the sound. Mm -hmm. The little monitor the that The sound makes... mixer. That's the right word. <laughs> Look at me go. The thing our little jokes come out of. Our jokes come through it and into the laptop <laughs> and then to we you. Put it on the internet to you. <laughs> and you can't escape it. You're welcome. <laughs> Brought to you by Benjamin. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Um I don't know what to talk about. Oh, we should talk about the special that came ah! out. Yeah. Everyone, please go and stream The Last Door. Yes, the last door. She's yes. spooky, she's fun, she's local. Do you want to talk about it? Because it's basically your, like, project. I was kind of in for the ride. Yeah. Almost. Do you want to, like, talk about it a little yeah. bit to get them excited? So it was a fun special that we did in Pittsburgh at Cards Unlimited, and it was very – it was a lot of fun. <laughs> so we had two different versions of it, so I don't know if you guys listened or watched either one of those, but you can check them out on YouTube. So YouTube, we have more of, like, a vlog-style type yeah, thing. Yeah, very, like, um spooky vlog, almost like BuzzFeed Unsolved. They're yeah. doing, like, a paranormal – a uh, house and yeah. going through. It was a lot of fun. We got to do our version of ghost hunting, which is uh, being afraid of the ghosts mm -hmm. tripping, and surviving. Um, tripping, not uh, included, but what happened plenty of times. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sh it didn't happen, lol. <laughs> but yes, we have that. We got to interview a lot of people, which was a lot of fun. And then in the audio version, we got to have a lot of different interviews, including an exclusive by Miss Indigo. So yes, yeah, nice go check all of it interview. out. Yeah. <laughs> it was such a fun special, guys. Um, the episode um, is up right now. I think uh, for the anchor, it's under the Hollywood Social Club since mm -hmm. that's really the main case. But the last yeah. door refers to the last door before you enter the spooky movie. Yes. Thing so go check it out. It's got some great history and great spooky times. Yeah. And if you've also listened to it already or if you've watched it and supported us, thank you so much. We've yeah. gotten a lot of really good feedback mm -hmm. on this episode, I feel like, so far. Yeah. And we appreciate it all. And we're excited to start introducing a new special. So yes, keep your a eyes Christmas up. special's coming soon. Yes. That'll be Logan's child. <laughs> so baby. it's going to be so good. He's going to give birth on screen. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Imagine? Oh, God. Can you imagine? It's like a seahorse. <laughs> you have big seahorse energy. I have a seahorse energy. Yeah, like suddenly I see it. Like the teacher from Fish Hooks. I was just gonna say Fish Hooks. I love it. You definite, definite Fish Hooks energy. Like, I'm gonna look I don't like know that. why I haven't placed this till now, but my gosh, Mr. Water News, that's his name, Mr. Water News. I don't even remember that. I don't know. That's what Is I'm gonna really? look like. We're gonna be doing the show 20 years from now, and I'm gonna be like, "All right, everyone, all right, kiddos, get, get in the tank." Um. Oh, yeah. What was I also going to mention that I think we should talk about? Oh, oh. we uh, are anchor wrapped for our podcast, yes. um, the little results we got. So mm -hmm. we found out most of you guys listen to us at night. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so our suspicion was correct that you guys <laughs> do fall asleep, asleep to, to us. our podcast. <laughs> so I every mean... <laughs> joke and every like weird thing we've said as a bit. Our bad. <laughs> uh, literally our bad. Also, it makes me feel better. Now I can literally say anything I want at the end of episodes and no one's going to hear it. And I think that's the best. <laughs> so I'm going to start saying chaotic things. So if you listen till the end, you'll start hearing it. Okay? Well, I think people still like listen to <laughs> us, but sometimes they're Now like... give them more incentive. Like, <laughs> what is going to happen at the end of the episode? I don't know. Oh my God. Keep tuning in. You won't regret it. Well, you might, but you might not. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. if you want to see uh, our promo images for the last special, 
um, as well as our anchor wrapped and whatnot, we can go to the mystery files underscore on Instagram. You can give yeah. us a follow and mm -hmm. let us know what you think of it. Yes, please give us a follow, guys. We just want to hear from you. We want to interact. Let's yes. interact. Let's have some fun. Want to interact with you guys. Let us interact. It'll be fun. <laughs> I like parents like making their kids do anything. Yes. Like interact with us, please. <laughs> <laughs> One small interaction. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> All right. So last time. On yes. the Browse, we talked about the Loch Ness Monster. Yes, it was Nessie the Messy. Little Nessie. <laughs> Little Nessie the Messy. <laughs> and now the this week it is Tiffany's turn. It's me. Yeah. Very excited to get planned for us. Yes. Supernatural esque. Supernatural esque. It's, it's definitely supernatural. There's no way this is real. The season's been kind of crazy. It's been kind of all over the place. Like, we started off with some true crime, really, mm -hmm. like, crazy stuff and then we were like the Loch Ness Monster. The thing is I was thinking about doing true crime this week and I was like eh, I want to do something wild. Yeah. So I did something wild instead. Like I don't feel like investigating. I feel like being in my imaginary universe of fun. I want to be in the crazy realm. That's what I want to do. So. Would you like your little drum roll? Yes. Get into it. All right. <sighs> this week on Z Mystery Files I present the case of Spring Heel Jack. Spring heel jack. What? <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on. I need to like uh, let everyone know that before this episode, <laughs> Tiffany was like, "Yeah, I was worried we've done this mystery before, but I don't think we've had. I've never heard that before." <laughs> good, in good. My life. Literally, thank God. I don't know. Something about it seemed like I knew it. Maybe I met it in a past life. I don't know. <laughs> Spring okay. heel jack, and I go way back. Spring oh my god. Spring heel jack. Spring Heeled Jack. Spring Heeled Jack. Yeah, not Springfield. Like not he's like jumping. the Simpsons. Oh. Spring Heeled, like he's got springs on the bottoms of his feet. Like moon shoes. Moon shoes, Jack. <laughs> That's so moon cute. Moon shoe Jack. That would moon be my shoe name. Jack. Moon shoe Jack. <laughs> Welcome to Mulan. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's going to be about this guy, Thing. Not really thing a guy. guy. He could be a guy. He could be, he'd be them. I don't know what He could this, be a love frog. <laughs> <laughs> it could be a love frog. You're going to have to give me the name of that thing. I think we should make a mini mystery on it. We should. If we can't That'd make a great. short one, yes. creepy frog guy is coming. <laughs> so let's get into a little intro about Mr. Ready? Springheel Jackathon. Yep, I said it. <laughs> so our intro. In Victorian England, the scariest boogeyman was a fire-breathing devil man who could jump unnaturally high. Some said he was a demon, while others thought he was just an extraordinarily agile human. But no matter what you believed about the legend, Spring-Heeled Jack was a name that inspired fear among many people. Oh my god. So that's his intro. That's that crazy creature guy. So wait, we already got, he can jump really high off of, like, rooftops, like, bounce for, mm -hmm. like, miles. He's just Santa. <laughs> Except he, he is, is also a fire-breathing devil man. Well, that, that's what I was going to say next. <laughs> Not only can he jump really, really high, he can also breathe fire. <laughs> like, They're like, yeah, he's either a really cool human or, like, he's a demon. Now that you mention it, I think I might have heard of, like, that before. Like, that power. Possibly the fire-breathing and jumping high? Yes. I don't know where, but I've never heard the name before. I don't know. It sort of sounds like a dragon. Like, yeah. I think I associate fire with dragons, but, like... Dragon energy. Very dragon energy. I don't know. Also, I want you to look up a picture of this guy. While we start, I think you just need to see. Oh, wait. You, oh, I guess I can pull it up for you. I suppose. <laughs> but you need to see a picture of this guy because I laughed out loud when I we'll saw him. We'll use it as uh, the promo image for yes, this episode. Please. Also, I didn't realize he was on Scooby-Doo. Well, I think he's in the Scooby-Doo comics, but oh, Stowe well, was there. Mm -hmm. He's just jumping around, having a good time. Can he's you... just jumping. He Okay, so here's the picture. <laughs> he looks like he should be in musical theater. Oh, my gosh. Here's the photo. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me he does not. <laughs> Please send me that for Yes. This. He <laughs> has, like, bat wings. <laughs> I'm like, who is this? Like, I don't think that's an accurate representation, but it literally has to be. That's so funny. He looks like Batman if he joined theater. What? Yeah. <laughs> Batman the musical. Batman the musical. But make it Spring Hill Jack. Not a Spring Hill Jack. The musical. The musical. <laughs> so, his name legend survives today mainly in the forms of plays and references and various forms of media. But his legend still holds a bit of the original creep factor it had when it first bubbled up out of the public consciousness. Reports of the wrath that would become Spring-Heeled Jack first started to appear in 1837. This is an old guy. 
1800s. He started in that crazy time that none of us live today were alive. And that's weird to me. <laughs> it's just like, what was I going to say? Like, 1800s <laughs> kind of goes back to the plague of, like, the dancing people. So yeah. imagine the hysteria from, like, that event. And now you got this guy on <laughs> the ground. You got this guy. Honestly, I think I'd be really afraid to live at this time. I feel like it just doesn't, it doesn't sit right with me. <laughs> like, people are dancing themselves till they die. And then, like, they got... this guy's jumping on your roof. And, they got like, devil men. Fire. <laughs> like, I don't like this energy. Also, I feel like any sort of media that's portrayed a lot of the 1800s, I just think it's scary. Yeah. It's very witchy. It's, like, yeah. <laughs> uncomfortable. Oh, 100%. Yes. So, it's back in olden times. So, as described, uh, historian Mike Dash's exhaustive history of the figure reported appearances by residents of a London neighborhood that began to report bizarre attacks, really more like harassments. So, from a ghost imp or devil in the shape of a large white bull. So... <laughs> They're saying this guy's harassing them, but they're Ooh. saying, like, oh, either, like, a ghost, an imp, a devil, or, like, something in the shape of a large white bull has been harassing me. A white bull? A white bull. Like, oh, a like bull. A bull. bull. Like a bull B-U-L-L. with B-U-L-L. horns. I can't speak. Bull. I thought you were saying, like, a bull. A like bowl a white, Like a cereal chili? bull. No. <laughs> yeah, a, a, a bull. Well, that's what, that's what my brain was trying to, like, figure out. You were trying like, to understand a what? A white? A bull? <laughs> a white cereal bull? No. A B-U-L-L. <laughs> Oh my god. But I just want to know why it's in so many shapes. Like, why in the shape of a B-U-L-L? So he's like, <laughs> so wait, so he's, he's like a shapeshifter too, is what I'm trying guess to so. say? Well, if okay. he is some sort of, like, if he does end up being a demon in all of this, like, it makes sense that he could shapeshift a little bit. Yeah, I mean, can't imps shapeshift? We never talked about that on the show. I don't know show. much about imps. What is an imp? An imp is just like, it's like a mostly like a little like ghost? devilish creature. It's like, imagine a baby devil almost. Oh, is like it like the thing around. that would stand on your shoulder and go, don't do that? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, Got exactly. It. it would be kind of like that kind of vibe and they would just like harass and like cause mischief <laughs> everywhere. Kind of like the evil fairies. I was just going to say, it sounds like a fairy. Yeah, very oh much God. that. It's basically evil fairies, but Satan's babies instead. I love that. Thank you. I'm not going to say that. I was going to say thank you, Satan's babies, <laughs> but I do not want to put that energy into the life. So I love God. He's like, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so spring Jack was also described by alleged victims as having a terrifying and frightful appearance with diabolical. diabolical. Let's see if I can think of how to say this word. Physiognomy. That was pretty good. Thank I don't you. know what the word is, but that's I don't, pretty I don't good. either. I don't read. So that <laughs> included, so basically his physique included clawed hands and eyes that resembled red balls of fire. Absolutely not. So imagine some big claws and some just red eyes. Big no thanks. This is like, this reminds me of, um, do you remember last time, um, whenever we watched um, Tiger King and they, when they were describing Joe Exotic, they were like, He's a psychopath. He's a oh, murderer. He's, he's gay. gay. <laughs> like, like it was like a bad thing. That's what this feels you like. You were it's waiting like... for it to say like, oh, he had clawed hands, uh, like, red eyes of fire. Like, he was gay. It's just yeah. It's just like why? it's like no. Why is no? <laughs> he's like it's like he's like he can jump on rooftops. He can breathe fire. He has fire in his eyes. He can transform into anything, including imps and white bulls. Um, he's also gay. And like, it's like, why was that included I as know. a bad thing? It's just so like it's oh. all like horrifying, and it's like gay. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm so scared. That's what this feels like, is that they're just, like, making up stuff as they yeah. go to be, like, these are, like, <laughs> Look at how intimidating this is. Oh, my God. I'm telling so you, Logan, funny. I'm really intimidated by you. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm so scared. What if I just had, like, fire come into my eyes right now? I don't know what I'd feel. A little afraid, but also intrigued. <laughs> are you going to be the spring Jack? Maybe. That's what you're turning into. So... <laughs> <laughs> One of the reports claimed that beneath a black cloak, he wore a helmet and a tight-fitting white garment, like an oil skin. So I'm not really sure what that means, but it must oh. have been a really white, like a really tight white shirt or white garment. So that picture wasn't like just like an illustration, like <laughs> that they were like thinking of. Like that's no. what he actually looked yeah. like. Yeah, they went. Yeah, he looks basically like that. He's got his black cloak. He's got his helmet. Oh my goodness. He looks horrifying. <laughs> yeah, he looks like he's just like. This is his night out on the town. Yes. Kind of. Like, this looks like this is his time to go out to the bars. It's yes. like, just ca causing a hullabaloo. Yes, and he's ready. He's ready to perform. He's got that cape, his cloak. He's ready. <laughs> I'm here to watch him. 
So, many stories also mention a devil-like aspect to this guy. So, like, he's not even just theatrical, he's also Satanly. So, it's kind of <laughs> scary. So, Springheel Jack was said to be tall and thin, with the appearance of a gentleman, and capable of making great leaps. So, several <laughs> reports <laughs> mention that he could breathe blue and white flames from his mouth, and that he wore sharp metallic claws at his fingertips. So... <laughs> <laughs> which part is it this time like the which blue part? eyes white dragon from Aww. Yu-Gi-Oh <laughs> I thought you were t- talking about um what is it uh, la, 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 la. what's that show Jake Long American Dragon yeah Jake Long American Dragon yeah <laughs> I mean it might as well be a dragon he definitely feels like it but also his metallic claws remind me of uh, Freddy Krueger yeah cause it said he wore metallic claws kind of like Wolverine too oh Wow. See? He's got all of them. So, <laughs> at least two individuals claimed that he was able to speak in comprehensible English. So, regardless of time and where he was at, he could still speak English. So, look at him go. Jesus. So, okay. this guy, I guess, or creature, mainly attacked women, which disrespect to women, sir. Mr. Jack mm. hates women, apparently. Uh, the figure slash monster would ring a doorbell, and when someone would answer... It would ravage their clothes with its claws. So it would just literally attack them. What is this guy's issue? I know. He said, I hate women. I'm going to attack you. Oh, great. He does musical theater and he hates women. <laughs> what is he? <laughs> oh, my God. This respect makes me so sad. Oh, so, my God. <laughs> other sightings have him simply ambushing people who were out walking. So sometimes he would come at your door and just attack you. Or you're taking a casual stroll and he just attacks you again. Like, oh, my. Like. You're just like walking down the street. And he's like, aha. <laughs> like, <laughs> aha. It's almost like present day being a woman. <laughs> because it sucks. <laughs> Similar reports continue to trickle in throughout the rest of the year with strange crimes being attributed to assailants in the guise of a ghost, a bear, and a bear. A, or a devil. So there's always different things that they're like, oh, it could have been this or this or this. Where do they but, get a bear from jumping on rooftops? A bear's and, not going like, to be that leafy. <laughs> and breathing fire, also. Like, That's a where crazy do they get a bear? bear. Also, I didn't get to mention this earlier when I was talking about the blue and white fire. That would be some really hot fire to come out. Because isn't that the hottest fire mm-hmm. would be blue and white? Yeah, it's like blue and like white is like such a high like oh. volume of heat. See? That's why, like, in, like, Avatar The Last Airbender, like, mm-hmm. when they do, like, blue fire, it's like, oh, wow. Like, like they're heated. I am scared of this person. <laughs> they are warm. So, yeah. So, imagine all of these things. Ghost, bear, and or devil breathing all this fire out. Mm-hmm. Disturbing. Oh, my God. So, oh, all of these different reports would eventually lead to the theory that this mysterious monster might have been a group of well-to-do men dressing up and scaring people on a bet. So, I'm guessing oh. if maybe that were a theory of what was happening then maybe they would have some sort of like torch or something behind them to make it look like they were breathing fire i don't really know how that would work okay that's That's actually not a bad not a bad take on it at all yeah like it's like a um 1800s version of a frat house yeah basically people just being stupid (laughs) bunch of dudes just rowing it up and pillaging yeah. the village they're like let's scare a bunch of people that'll be fun let's make them think it was some crazy creature out there oh my god i guess it makes sense seeing that guy like the picture of that guy mm-hmm. like i can kind of see it now yeah i can kind of see it too i i get it yeah but then i guess there's others have reported that he's wearing red shoes and armor so like more descriptions start adding extra things to him so now imagine this guy even more theatrical with his little like red shoes version two yeah it's like oh version two <laughs> He's like, I got a new look. I got red <laughs> shoes. So I guess the descriptions were all over the place of what he was. And some were so outlandish that um, when these tales hit the pages of the major London papers, uh, Dash notes that most of the press was rightfully skeptical. Skeptical. So like a lot of them were like, oh, yeah. this is fake. This is made up. I mean, kind of rightfully so. You, you're trying to say that there's a man jumping on top of roofs and yeah. fire and like... <laughs> Again, even if it was a bear, like, yeah. what? Like, why would you think it was a bear? Yeah, the thing is, the press likes to be skeptical, especially, I mean, like, a paper, a newspaper. They're not yeah. going to want to throw something crazy out because they're like, oh, yeah, this has to be real, real. But I'm like, why can't it be something crazy Would it be funny if he was out on the prowl? Like, would it be funny seeing him jump roof to roof? I mean, Maybe kinda. a little. It's satanic Santa. 
Yeah, Satanic Santa. He just jump into the roofs. But it's like also like it's probably unlikely that's a real person either. No, though, like how is he jumping? Time. Unless he's like really, mm-hmm. I don't know. Like he's got it. <laughs> you got the gift, kid. <laughs> he's got the gift <laughs> of jumping. Fire and jump. Well, some people can swallow fire, so why can't they figure out a way to breathe it? What if he's the CEO of Moon Shoes? <laughs> like, what if we like Google it after what? this and it's like. He's the what of moon shoes? The what? He's the what of the CEO. CEO. Like, <laughs> Let's look it up. Is <laughs> Who is the CEO of moon shoes? Spring Heeled Jack, <laughs> the CEO of moon shoes. It's not going to be on there. Keep in it's mind, this is all be... in caps, too. I didn't take it off the caps lock. Huh. Nothing. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> I mean, it's almost like. You broke Google. <laughs> I think Google's broken in the first place. <laughs> no info on that. What's up with it? Look up who the CEO of Moon Shoes is. Is Moon Shoes even still a thing? I highly doubt it. CEO of Moon Shoes. Let's look at it. Uh huh. Uh huh. We're looking. Bankrupt. Oh, did you know they were part of a merchandising effort by Nickelodeon? No, but that makes sense. Didn't know Isn't that. Is that why we saw the commercials for those? I guess so. Oh, wait, what? It's not saying who the CEO is, so I guess there's not. So it, it, it probably it, is a Nickelodeon guy. But or or it could be him. Because <laughs> there's no info means... about it online. They Spring don't want Heel us Jack. to know. It's a conspiracy. <laughs> it's a conspiracy, guys. This is what we're really talking about today. What are moon shoes and who made them? <laughs> Why could I never jump so high, huh? <laughs> because he hates women. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't want you to break that glass ceiling. <laughs> Feminism, not to spring heel Jack. <laughs> he targets women, and he hates them, and he won't let them use moon shoes properly. You heard it here first. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> anyway, my face is itchy because I laughed. Never happened to you? Yeah. It's because my skin's so pale. I don't think that's... Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm already like a little sweaty from laughing so much. Do you know, and like, we're only at like twenty some minutes. <laughs> when your skin's warm, do you get itchy? Yeah, sometimes. Okay, then it makes sense why my face is itchy because I was laughing. <laughs> I just need to know the logistics. So, anywho, back to the case. The Lord Mayor of London, named John Cohen, even came out in January of 1838 to address the growing numbers of stories, bringing mm. up the theory that the attacks were perpetrated by a gang of wealthy jerks out there. So. He, he's thinking it might just be a bunch of wealthy guys oh, like we talked about before. Oh, wealthy too, it is Batman. Yeah, it's literally Batman, guys. So oh my God. he's thinking it's Batman. So, however, that didn't stop the legend from growing. And as the papers reported more accounts, the devilish figure came to be called Spring-Heeled Jack, as many of the reports involved the creep leaping in front of or away from his victims in such a way that no mortal man would ever be capable of. So even it says, like, hey, there's literally no way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this could be a real guy. So, mm-hmm. we have all the backgrounds. So, now let's get into some of the earliest reports of sightings of this Ooh, guy. okay. So, according to newspaper articles dating to December 1837, the first reports of Jack's activities were made in September of that year in London. A businessman returning home late one night from work told of being suddenly shocked as a mysterious figure jumped with ease over the considerably high railings of a cemetery, landing right in his path. So that's how it starts. So imagine you're walking alone at night <laughs> by a cemetery. It's already kind of freaky, right? And then some creature just jumps over the high railings and just goes into the cemetery. It kind of reminds me of the dude from uh, Sailor Moon who's like, do you know what I'm talking about? The no. one who has like the mask and the top hat? I don't remember his name. No, but He's... I need to show me after because I'm <laughs> incredibly intrigued. Like, I feel like he would just like come out of nowhere and be like, aha! Aha! <laughs> Hello! <laughs> You see, what I'm thinking of, it sort of sounds like an um, angel. Have you ever seen pictures Ooh. of, like, realistic angels? Mm-hmm. Like, that, they're horrifying. So yeah, he no. kind of sounds like what a realistic angel would look like. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Maybe some sort of angel. Wow. <laughs> a scary angel. I mean, yeah, it's highly possible. Yeah, so this guy, walk in, all the stuff's happening. So no attack was actually reported that night. Mm-hmm. But the submitted description was disturbing. It was of a muscular human male with devilish features, including large and pointed ears and nose, and protruding, wow. glowing eyes. So that's, like, the first one. The first that, time someone saw him. 
that feels like it could be a real report of someone doing oh it. yeah like what when what year was that did it say this was 1837 okay and it started in 18 like 30 yeah i believe it started 1837 as well this was the first reported okay. case of it that makes sense though because like it they're not saying that he like jumped really high like it's not a crazy thing to yeah well record. well over a cemetery like fence do you see how high some of those are get like the mm, gates mm -hmm. okay but over depending, the fence okay mm. like depending on how high it actually was yeah. i just picture like the really tall cemetery gates because we usually make them high so people don't break into them yeah i could also see possibly though at the same time i could see like obviously like we've talked with i said this earlier like the hysteria stuff like it's possible mm -hmm. he could have climbed it and jumped over it and her like oh yeah her mind was like he jumped it yeah you know like all he saw was like the thing jumping so i think it's very possible like, yes that actually it could have happened been. That's the only thing is like the glowing eyes and the well the point of ears and nose isn't that crazy maybe someone just has it been a mask that's my yeah thing. like it could have been like a little mask he was wearing or something see and that and makes sense too the moonlight illuminated his eyes maybe yeah. he has beautiful blue eyes maybe like it's, maybe it's logan's eyes and they're just so beautiful <laughs> they look scary at night like it's not my fault <laughs> I'll, I'll just be sitting in the dark and my light eyes will like light up blue like they're like a flashlight they flicker like a cat <laughs> every time it's i so blink scary. it like flickers in the room that's a shame does it <laughs> flicker when you're asleep you yeah when i'm in rem <laughs> when you're in goes ha ah. <laughs> flicker flicker <laughs> i can't with you so we'll get on to the second uh reported sighting so later in october of 1837 a girl by the name of mary stevens was walking to lavender hill where she was working as a servant after visiting her parents in battersea on her way through uh clapham common according to her later statements a strange figure leapt at her from a dark alley after embolishing her with a tight grip of his arms, he began scratching her with his claws, which were, according to her deposition, cold and clammy as those of a corpse. Yuck. So she's saying, hey, Yucky. this thing attacked me, and I could feel its claws scratching my skin, and he felt like a corpse. It's just like, he's just bothering them at this point. Like, he's just being a weirdo. Yeah, I'm like, why are you doing that? He's like a freak. Why are you... Why do you feel like a dead body? Oh my god. Oh. I just don't like that he's cold and clammy. That makes it ooh. I bet you he's probably like not dead though or anything. I think he probably just feels like that. I mean, like, it is October. Got clammy hands. Yeah. It's October. <laughs> he could be pretty cold. But also, why is he attacking you? He was like, it's either gloves or the claws. He said, <laughs> I'm going or, claws. I'm going with claws tonight, I think. <laughs> I think I'm going to look great doing this. Oh my god. Ew. He's like, who needs to be warm? <laughs> who needs warmth on a night like uh, this? Oh my I don't like the description. God. I feel bad for good old Miss what's her name? Mary Stevens. Ugh. Is that is that the like That's end the, of that one? Um, there's a little more. Okay, so, yeah, go for it. Uh, in panic, the girl screamed, making the attacker quickly flee from the scene of the assault. So the commotion mm. attracted several residents who launched an immediate search for the aggressor, but it could not be found. Like the aggressor like, couldn't be they found they couldn't find a trace of him yeah smart girl for screaming though yeah. real loud and getting him out of there heck yeah get him caught but it is weird that they didn't find him and mm -hmm. after a lot of people looking how could they not find him mm -hmm. but i don't know that's the end of her little story but i guess the next day the leaping character allegedly chose a very different victim who was near mary stevens so we had mary stevens story oh, so a correlation that yeah there it. was one correlated with her mm. so um, it was near her home, so inaugurating a modus operandi that would become typical of future reported, he jumped in the way of a passing carriage, causing the coachman to lose control and crash, injuring oh. him seriously. Several witnesses claimed that he escaped by jumping over a nine-foot high wall while babbling what? with a high-pitched and ringing laughter. I don't uh, like that. I don't like, like an evil any... villain, like a cartoon yeah. evil villain. Ew. I don't like this in high-pitched ringing laugh while he's jumping over a nine-foot wall. What? Like a Cartoon Network cookie-cutter villain yeah. kind of storyline. Like, whoa. Ew. <laughs> if I was there, I wouldn't know what to say. Like, if I saw that happen, you're like, like, is this real life? The fence, and like he's, like, it... laughing maniacally. Like, it makes sense this is on Scooby-Doo, or, like, in the Scooby-Doo comics. No, because he sounds made up. He yeah. sounds, like, very written, he like, by a Scooby-Doo producer or something. I don't like any of this. Oh, my God. But the fact that other people saw it, too, and, like, it caused an accident. Like, if this were a real person, I don't think they'd be crazy enough to do something like that. See, the... 
Um, I mean, maybe they might, but... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, at this point, though, like, if he is, like, harassing, like, women and doing all this stuff, I could see someone, like, being like that, like, Mm -hmm. crazy to just, like, be just causing chaos just for the sake of chaos. And the first Um, person, I guess, I think the first person was male, the second person was female. mm -hmm. But I think his main people he like that's usually like was his target but still yeah. though he's like causing harm like to these citizens yeah like, it kind of shows like i could believe that the problem i'm having <laughs> is, is that both of these incidents are very believable to me yeah. until you get to the end like it feels like <laughs> at the end they just add something for fun yeah like, they're like yeah he like pushed this carriage out of the way or he like try to attack this woman i'm like yeah that sounds very real and then it's like yeah and he jumped like really high he like, jumped over a nine foot wall and started laughing like a villain <laughs> like it just feels like, like a late add-on to the story it's like wait like what? This is real life i don't know this went a little too far-fetched for me you're like but... hold on what? huh like, what pardon you it's just like i tell you about like i'm going out to brunch with like a friend or like i'm going out on a date and i'm like yeah and at the end i started shooting like fire from my mouth and, and i'm like what back up <laughs> like, i'm like you had a normal time until when until when like it's just like at the end of the story like yeah and that's when i caught everything on fire with my mouth <laughs> like it's like the same idea of like oh i started choking and then all the demons came and like <laughs> caught my house on fire but man that choking spell was pretty rough like what? <laughs> so much oh has happened. God. Yeah, no, so exactly. much chaos, but also. But who added this on? Like, did all these citizens see that person jump, or was he like, mm. yeah? Well, it said several witnesses claimed that they saw it, so it wasn't just one person seeing this crazy stuff happen. I just had a thought. What? What if he it was just like really good at parkour before parkour was a thing? <laughs> I mean, so, maybe like, if he has a big like what is it stick? I don't know what's technically called. Mm, they mm-hmm. used to like. I guess I'm thinking of pole vaulting. I'm not thinking of parkour. Yeah. Parkour is just kind of like street, like, jumping in and around and, like, trying to use momentum to, like, go <laughs> He's through. He's really good at parkour. So, like, depending on what the wall was, if it was made from, like, a certain brick, he could leverage his foot on the wall and go, like, huh, 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 and, like, <laughs> It's like a over. Mario character. <laughs> 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 Is that Mario I'm thinking of that jumps like you, that? You, 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 like a green pipe just shows up and he like <laughs> falls. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> I can't do this. <laughs> well, mine's not right, so that's okay. <laughs> I can't make fun of you when mine doesn't sound anything correct to what it's supposed to be. So yeah, we have those cases. But then I guess gradually the news of the strange character spread and soon the press and the public gave him the name of spring Jack. So he then gained, like, the official recognition, and a few months later, on January 9th in 1838, the Lord Mayor of London, Sir John Cohen, revealed in a public session held in the Mansion House an anonymous complaint that he had received several days earlier, which he had withheld in the hope of obtaining further information. So the correspondent who signed the letter was just called themselves a resident of, of Peckham. And they wrote this. So this is a message they wrote. Oh, so. I love message episodes. Ooh, now I have to pick, like, an accent. But I'm not good at, like, London. Can I do, like, British? You're not good at London. <laughs> but, like, London specifically. I don't know what the difference of dialects. You should sound a little bit, like, proper. Like, not, <clears throat> not too much. Not too that's, British. That's too Australian. Okay. But. It appears that some individuals of, as the writer believes, the highest ranks of life, have laid a wager with a mischievous and foolhardly companion that he durst not take upon himself the task of visiting many of the villages near London in three different disguises, a ghost, a bear, and a devil, (gasps) and moreover, that he will not enter a gentleman's gardens for the purpose of alarming the inmates of the house. The wager has, however, been accepted, and the unmanly villain has succeeded in depriving seven ladies of their senses, two of whom are not likely to recover, but to become burdens to their families. At one house, the man rung the bell, and on the servant coming to open the door, this worse than brute stood in no less dreadful figure than a spectre clad most perfectly. The consequence was the poor girl immediately swooned and has never from that moment been in her senses. So, pause. So I, I guess he's coming to these houses and, like, just having some sort of, like, weird spell and, like, making these girls just, like, be, like, out of their senses. Like, like they don't really know what's going on. not themselves anymore. I'm almost yeah, possessed. Yeah, like, trance-like. Wow. So, like, what? Um... The biggest plot twist of them all is that he is a bear. <laughs> like, he, well, it said a ghost does something in a bear. Yeah, but like he is a bear. <laughs> <laughs> he is a bear. He's a ghost, a bear, and a devil. He's everything and nothing that we can dis- like, discern. I thought people were as. trying to say like it was a bear the entire time, but he just dressed as a. Oh my god! <laughs> so he was a bear. Well, 
So, and then the ending is just, the writer has reason to believe that they have the whole story at their finger ends, but through interested motives, are induced to remain silent. So all these people wow. are staying silent about it, but, like, someone, some anonymous person has come forward and made all of this known to the mayor yeah. of London. Wow. Of London. That's London. crazy. Yeah. So imagine getting this letter. <laughs> imagine, I'm just, like, thinking about, like, in their, like, archives in London, that that letter is probably there somewhere. Mm-hmm. Like, or something. Like, this documentation of these incident reports. Like, that's just so wild to me. Yeah. The fact that, like, that they have, like, official, official documentation of spring Jack is so funny to me. Yeah, though, it's, like, really weird to think <laughs> about, like, nowadays. Like, imagine if someone, like, made that claim now. They'd be like, you're crazy. Like, you're a literal idiot. Like, you're, you're huh? <laughs> what? what? It's a bear? It's a It's a, who? It's a what? It's a ghost? It's just this too episode good. should have been titled um, uh, "Bulls, Bears, and Ghosts." Oh my! <laughs> should put that in the description. You should. Oh my god, I'm gonna do that. Oh my gosh, you have to remember it. It's cute. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna write that down <laughs> after this episode. Perfect. <laughs> so, uh, though the Lord Mayor seemed fairly skeptic- skeptical, a member of the audience confirmed servant girls about Kensington Hammersmith and uh, Ealing tell dreadful stories of the ghosts or devil. So I guess there's some people in the audience confirmed that there's been all these stories from women there about like this ghost or devil creature. So people are confirming it in the town as well, apart oh, from wow. the anonymous people. Mm-hmm. So uh, the matter was reported in the Times and other national papers the next day. And the day after that, January 11th, the Lord Mayor showed a crowded gathering a pile of letters from various places in and around London what? complaining of similar wicked pranks. The Whoa. quality of letters that poured in the mansion house suggests that the activities of spring Heel Jack were common knowledge in suburban London by that time. And then I guess one writer said he had ascertained that several young women in Hammersmith had been frightened into dangerous fits and some severely wounded by a sort of claws the miscreant wore on his hands. Oh my god. So like they would get attacked after like going in these like fits. That like is crazy to me because that like i think i'm gonna pull back on the idea i said about the hysteria because like that's like a real medical thing like these people had like cuts on their arms yeah scratches like that's real medical proof Mm -hmm. that's crazy like it literally sounds like they're being attacked by a demon especially when they describe a ghost and then like after because even people who are like in the process of getting possessed they can have like this trance like things happen to them and then they get like the three scratches or like different but scratches it adds on their body. To the theory too that there's multiples of them too. It's yeah. like all these people are reporting at the same time and it's filling in. Like that's mm-hmm. crazy. Like I think it feeds into the idea that it's paranormal and like mm-hmm. obviously more than one person is being affected. So it's almost like a public yeah. poltergeist or some sort of like like you talked about before, like the imps and stuff too. I said like mm-hmm. uh, the mischievous, like they are like little tiny things that are mischievous, but they can also shape shift. So it's possible yeah. it's a bunch of imps also, like just yeah. having a fun just time on the supernatural wacky. side of it. Yeah, ooh, it's so ooh. creepy. This case is just like so many different things. Yeah, it's like what are you truly? So, another correspondent affirmed that in Stonewall, Brixton, Camberwell, and Vauxhall, several people had died of fright, and others had fits. So people aren't just getting hurt. People are dying of, like, because they are so afraid. Well, probably, too, like, if they, like, saw him or something, like, getting jump scared. Like, they yeah. might have had a heart attack. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Like, that's horrifying. And then I guess uh, other people reported that the trickster had been repeatedly seen in Lewisham and Black Health, but the police were too frightened of him to act. So even the police are like, what are we supposed to do? Like, we don't want to die. How do we stop him? Yeah. yeah like, we don't, Yeah so wow that's crazy and then how are you gonna catch him or even know like where to start looking like i'd be scared like i'd die myself like how are they supposed to catch something they don't really know how to contain Mm -hmm. like what are you gonna do when he like bounces to the moon and you can't get him what are you gonna do when he starts possessing you buddy when the imp gets you what do you do starts bouncing you start jumping around (laughs) you start moon bouncing to the moon (laughs) moon shoes They all the people who stood up actually become moon shoes salesmen because they've got on the good side of spring the officers, jack. The officers have a whistle and they're like, You there! And they have like moon shoes and they're like, Let's get them, boys! And they're like, Let's boing, get em, boing, boing, boing. <laughs> it's perfect. I don't care that it was this the is 1800s. A new character. It literally, now I want to find the, the comic and read it. Oh my god. That would be my goal after this to find it online. That's so. Cool. <laughs> Oh, uh, 
let's see. The Lord Mayor himself was in two minds about the affair. He thought the greatest exaggerations had been made and that it was quite impossible that the ghost performs the feats of a devil upon earth. But on the other hand, someone he trusted had told him of a servant girl at Forest Hill who had been scared into fits by a figure in a, in a bear's skin. He was confident that a person or persons involved in this uh, pantomime display would be caught and punished. So, like, some people believe that it was, it still is a person. Yeah, I was actually yeah. going to say, like, with the bear thing, I can, the, in the true crime aspect of it, I could see it being a skinned bear that he put over his head yeah. to look like a bear. That's so like, disturbing. And if it's nighttime, like, you might not see, like, if it's a person or not, too. Like, I saw a bear. Mm -hmm. Like, I would think that, too, if I was looking out our window now and saw someone walking down the yeah. street with it. Oh, I just thought of a really good theory. But I don't know if it's mm. going to be in our theories, but here's my idea so far. What if... It's some sort of, like, group of people all mm. working for some sort of evil, like, devil thing. And I was he's going culty, making too. them do all that stuff. But I was he's going still cult. doing stuff himself. I was also thinking cult whenever yeah. you said there's multiple people and how, like, the scratches from everyone, it mm -hmm. feels like a very cult messaging system. Like, it's just, it's a little too interesting for mm -hmm. me. <laughs> a little too interesting. <laughs> so, let's see where I want to go next with this. So, two of the most well-known attacks follow. According to an account that was widely publicized at the time, in February of 1838, a man rung the doorbell of uh, Jane Asloff's screaming house, and they caught Spring-Heeled Jack, and they needed help. They caught him? I guess they caught him. So, when she brought the man a candle there in the dark street, he proceeded to breathe blue flames in her face and tear at her skin and clothes with his metal claws. Oh, my God. So, I'm assuming she caught onto him. But then he started screaming his fire. Like a cat. Yeah. Like a like a like cat. a fire cat. <laughs> like a fire cat. Like when you pick them up and they don't want to be like, held. Rawr, and, like, <laughs> and she's holding her candle in the street. So I guess then she ran back towards her house, but he continued to cut her with his claws until her sister came to her rescue, scaring off the attacker. Uh, she Whoa. also described Jack as having eyes like red fireballs and wearing a helmet and tight fitting white outfit. It was a bizarre account, but spring -heeled Jack's reputation as some kind of devil grew. So, like, he became even more, this might be a devil instead, because mm. it just got weird. Mm. So then, the next known attack was just days later. Um, it took place in a different part of London. Uh, a woman named Lucy Scales was walking with her sister when a shadowy man jumped out and also allegedly blew blue flames into her face, oh causing her to have some kind of seizure. So, like, this Whoa. put her into, like, a fit that was, like, could a could be checked uh, medically so it was a seizure her yeah. fit so while many of the initial reports of Jack's attacks also took place in outlying hamlets and villages both the Aslop and Scales cases took place closer to the city and received a great deal more attention stroking the fires of spring -heel Jack's legend and their testimonies also informed that would become his popular look as a gentlemanly devil figure wow yeah. That's, mm, I wonder if they had, like, any mark, like, marketing, any um, record of, uh, if she had, like, any burn marks on her face or anything, like, from the fire, like, any, like, heat exhaustion kind of yeah. thing with it. Because that mm -hmm. would really add to it, too, with the fire. See, that's um, a good call. I'm surprised I haven't seen anything about, like, them having fire on their faces. Yeah. But it also de depends on, like, what direction he blew the fire, but it like, said he blew it at her. But. Yeah, because it's, like, the I, we've already decided the claw thing is, like, real because people have, like, have reported, like, it was, like, a real thing they saw. That's a medical thing. But it's, yeah. like, whether it burn people as well. Like, people have signs of, like, burns on their arms yeah. or, like, their face or anywhere else on their body. See, I feel like that would be one of the biggest clues, like, mm -hmm. to prove the existence of whatever this mm -hmm. is. Because I feel like the reason people can't quite place what it is is because you can get scratched by a bear, you can get scratched by, like, yeah. people making fake claws and whatnot, but... Well, you said the thing earlier with, like, if it was, like, based in, like, true crime, because this mm -hmm. is a case, I think, that's intersection of, like, you can take it as true crime or supernatural. Yeah, and that's and why I said before we even started, I was fun. like... I was like, it's supernaturally truthfully... What did I say? <laughs> criminal? Yeah. <laughs> truthfully criminal. Um, I was gonna say you mentioned the thing about the torches behind them to like make that like fire effect so like that's also possible mm -hmm. like that is a very possible thing yeah if they had enough torches to like figure out how to make that fire move like. yeah but also did they have torches back then now I'm wondering it's the 1800s well I, I mean I was thinking more of like a blowtorch but like I guess they could use their little wooden yeah like torch kind of how like not to bring it to the Grinch, but, like, when he has, like, the alcohol in his mouth and he oh, has the fire like, and he, like, 
pours it out. Why are you so right, though? Like, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. They don't have, like, flamethrowers, but, like, they have torches. Yes. That's perfect. That's, like, remember, like, in Frankenstein? They're like, let's get them. Let's like, get them. <laughs> but they're little, <laughs> they're pitchforks and all their goods. They should have just pillaged against him. They Maybe they all will. just gone together. I don't oh. know if they will. I have no idea. <laughs> the thing is, I read the highlights of the story because I like to also be surprised. I read enough to know what's happening, and I hope for the best. But <laughs> we'll see what happens. That's so funny. Yes. So now we're going to get into the last reports of it. Mm-hmm. So in the beginning of the 1870s, spring Jack was reported again in several places distant from each other. In November 1872, the News of the World reported that Peckham was in a state of commotion owing to what is known as the Peckham Ghost, a mysterious figure quite alarming in appearance. So, an editorial pointed out that it was none other than the spring Jack who terrified mm-hmm. a past generation. So, he was known as two different things in two different times, because then, okay. then realized, like, hey, it's this guy. So, We're it's the Peckham two, two Ghost together. and spring Jack. Same dude. Same creature. So it's like similar- the bear. <laughs> it's a bear. It's a ghost. It's a... What's the other thing? Devil. 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 White bull. White bull. <laughs> A white bowl of cereal. So, <laughs> the editorial pointed out that it was not another than spring Jack who terrified the past generation, but similar stories were published in the Illustrated Police News. In April and May of 1873, there were numerous sightings of the park ghost in Sheffield, which locals came to identify as also spring Jack. So, these incidents uh, culminated with thousands of people gathering each night to hunt the ghost. So, we do have some people. Hey, let's go. Look at them go. Oh, Imagine, like, having enough people in your life to want to hunt ghosts. Aww. Like, a lot of them. Like, a whole... Like, a hangout session? Yeah. Like, you guys want to uh, um, hunt for uh, Spring Hill Jack this week? Let's all look for Spring Hill what Jack I this weekend. That. Let's get a whole group of people together. Like, thousands of people gathering each night. That's so fun. To hunt the ghosts. Like, that's crazy to me. Oh, my God. Imagine we get a thousand Pittsburghers, and we're like, hey, guys, let's go hunt Spring Hill Jack. And you're like, who's Spring Hill Jack? <laughs> like, who is that? And you go, you don't remember the 1800s, this crazy guy? And they're like, no, <laughs> Tiffany, I've never heard of him. <laughs> Quite literally, no. Oh, my God. So, uh, this news was followed by more reported sightings until uh, August, 70, August 1877. One of oh, the wow. most notable reports of spring Jack came from a group of soldiers in Aldershot's barracks. The story went as follows. A sentry on duty at the north camp peered into the darkness, his attention attracted by a peculiar figure bounding across the road towards him, making a metallic noise. The soldier issued a challenge, which went unheeded and the figure vanished from sight for a few moments. As the soldier turned back to the post, the figure reappeared beside him and delivered a s- delivered several slaps to his face. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. And then he described these slaps with a hand as cold as that of a corpse. So Again, that is also described as a hand of a corpse. Hand. But imagine, that's like, so funny. you're looking about, like, and everything, and you see, not- you see something, it disappears... And then suddenly it's just reappeared beside you and starts smacking you in the face. <laughs> like, bam, 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 bam. <laughs> Like, stop, stop. Bing stop. bong. There you go. Bing bong. <laughs> Bing bong. It's Logan's bit. Oh, my. <laughs> I'm just, like, thinking, can you just imagine uh, Spring Hill Jack reading all these news articles? <laughs> like, he had cold and clammy. <laughs> I did so. I did all that. Cold and clammy as a corpse. Oh, oh my corpse God. Corpse guy is what they call me. He's probably so insecure about his <laughs> He's like, are they really that bad? I try to wear gloves, but they're made of claws. It's not my fault. <laughs> what I find funnier, too, is that he didn't, like, <laughs> use the claws to claw at his face. He's For just real. smacking he him. He just around. several slaps to the face with a hand as cold as a corpse. <laughs> what like, is that? He didn't even, like, try to, like, like attack him with his claws. He's just, He's like, what, slapping I just slap him, him a little. <laughs> I get it. You know, sometimes you just want to slap someone. I get it. No, no claws used, just a little... That's so funny. <laughs> I love that. Oh my god. So I guess after the slap, attracted by the ensuing noise, several men rushed to the place, but they claimed that the character leapt several feet over their heads and landed <laughs> behind them. What? Again, what? <laughs> Literally, what? What? I can't. <laughs> so... <laughs> According to their testimony, spring Jack simply stood there watching them and grinning, apparently waiting for their reaction with glee. Like, like he jumps over them and is like, did you guys see that? Did you see did that, you guy? see that? I slapped him real quick. <laughs> I, it was really quick. Corpse-like, quickly, now I'm jumping feet over your heads and standing here grinning like a crazy person. He's like, D- wasn't that cool, guys? <laughs> you guys like that? I'll do it again. You dare me? Do you want to see me do it again? <laughs> you want to see me touch it again? <laughs> 
Oh, I can't. So then, I guess, um, while he's standing there with glee, one of the guards shot at him oh. with no visible effect other to enrage his target. So, like, he got shot at he and he still lived. Mad. Like, what is that? Oh, my God. So, some sources claim the soldier may have fired blanks at him, merely mm. used to make warning shots. Mm -hmm. The strange figure then charged towards them and spat blue flames at them from his mouth. Yeah, I'm so it, tired. <laughs> it, it made the guards desert their posts in panic, and then they disappeared into the surrounding darkness. They said, I don't really care about my job anymore. I'm out. That guy's jumping around and slapping my face. He's breathing flames. He's jumping feet in the air. They just gave up. He said, I tried to shoot him. Didn't they do said, anything, though. Everyone, dis disperse, separate. <laughs> disperse into the night, friends. <laughs> And off they went. It's literally like a cartoon villain. Like it in the is. movies when there's like the giant monster and they shoot at it and it doesn't do anything. And they're like, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Run. Get out of here, gang. Why would this be a really good cartoon, though? It would be. I like... want to watch it. What the heck? Maybe there is an episode of, of Scooby-Doo. Maybe it's not just a comic. Mm -hmm. We'll have to look into it because now I want to see it. Oh, my God. So I guess there were several more alleged attacks of spring -Heel Jack on guards at Aldershot. Um, all these sightings concurred in the description of a tall, muscular complexion wearing a helmet and a white, tight-fitting oilskin suit. Mm -hmm. So after these reports, a massive spree of spring heel Jack sightings poured in from all over England. In Lincolnshire, he was allegedly seen leaping over several houses wearing sheepskin. So now he's a sheep, too. So He's just everything. He's just a jack of all trades, what? ain't he? He's <gasps> literally oh always a jack of all trades! He's a jack heel of all trades. I didn't even think of that. I it love ju that. it just comes to me, you know. I say you're just so it's so easy <laughs> for you to be so good. And I love that for you. So <laughs> I can't even. Many witnesses claims that um the shots did not hit, did hit him, I guess. So I guess more people uh, fired at him cuz they they created an angry mob after him. Yeah, they shot I mean, him and said hey, it hit him. So. But did it kill him? So I guess after it hit him, uh sounding as though they were hitting a hollow metallic object like an empty bucket. As usual, he was said to have made use of his sleeping abilities to lose the crowd and disappear once again. So he lived. But they were saying when they were shooting him, it sounded like he was made of metal. Well, I mean, he could have had, like, a... Like, armor or something. Armor or something on, too, like, if it was a real person. <laughs> How is he jumping so easy if he's got metal all over, all over him protecting his That's body? That's also a great point. You're so right. Like, how is he so fluid about it? They just, like, turned him into a superhero. Like, yeah. Like, supervillain, supervillain. Supervillain. Um, like, just, like, full on, like, <laughs> he can do anything. And, like, no one can do anything about it. Yeah. Like, like what? I'll, I also, I think, I just don't like that they said it's an empty bucket. And also, I think it's fun that they were an angry mob. So, you got your full angry, angry mob train. I got the character development that I wanted. Yes, the we got the driven. ghost hunters. We got the angry mob. We got the soldiers. <laughs> we got all bits and sorts of people up in here that i hope this is a movie i want it not. to be i hope it's, it's a scooby-doo episode i hope well. it is too bring it up <laughs> so i guess by the end of the 19th century the reported sightings of spring Hill jack were moving towards western england in september 9 1904 in everton in north wow. liverpool and then i guess they just started going throughout the world and then they stopped fizzled out <laughs> yeah they fizzled out throughout the years and, yeah, so now I guess his legacy just kind of stays on. But mm -hmm. there are some theories of what Mr. Jackie Boy was. Mm -hmm. Do you want to get into those? Yeah, let's hear the theories. So the fact that no one ever caught and identified as spring -Heel Jack combined with the extraordinary abilities attributed to him and the very long period of time that he was reportedly at large have led to all sorts of theories to determine both his nature and his identity. While several researchers seek a rational explanation to the events, other authors echo themselves in the more fantastical details of the story to propose different kinds of paranormal speculations. So let's find our first theory. So, one moment. I had a feeling that um, by the 19th century it was going to fizzle out because it's the same thing with the Dancing Plague of 1800. All of that hysteria like ended up yeah. just stopping. Mm -hmm. But I do think it is crazy that this lasted for almost 80 some years. Yeah. Like, that is wild to me. Like, like that's like a lifetime. So like, that can't be just one or two people in a town messing around. Like, yeah, like, that's a lifetime of, like, mm -hmm. events and incidents and reports and mythology and just, it's yeah. crazy. Like, there's got to be more behind it. And the fact that it was so widespread, it wasn't just contained mm -hmm. to one town or one... Yeah, exactly. I don't know. Like, it's I just, just think that's weird. so interesting. 
So uh, there's a lot of different theories here of what it could mm. be, but I'm excited to share the first one, which oh is probably God. one of my favorites. I didn't get into it because I knew I was going to love it the most. But a common theory <laughs> proposes that Spring Heel Jack was an extraterrestrial entity. Oh my god. Somehow stranded on Earth. Oh my god. And everyone knows how much I love aliens, so this one just makes sense. <laughs> so, let's get into why that is, though. Tiffany, why? Why could it be an ex extraterrestrial entity? So, supporters of this theory believe this would explain his non-human appearances and features. So, his retro-reflected red eyes or phosphorus breath... His jumping ability by suggesting that he may have been a native of a planet with greater gravitational pull of a planet. <laughs> okay. So, so something like okay. the moon. The moon yeah. would be something mm -hmm. that he could like, have been from. Okay, yeah, I can, get, so, I can get with that. It would also explain, like, strange behavior, which could have been altered through, like, a solipsism syndrome or a result of breaking the gases present at the Earth's atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So, and his longevity, like, how long he was able to live. Because I think it was more than 80 years. I'll have to see Yeah, I was about long... to say it was over, like, a lifetime. It was almost yeah. 100 years, it seemed. Like. Yeah, like, he was really old and... He could do all this crazy stuff. So they're thinking it might have been something not from this earth. Or even a group of aliens. Like yeah. Not just oh my one, God, which adds to it. Like it was a herd. A herd of aliens. Oh my gosh. That'd be so, so don't cute. call them cute. I like them. You're Come like, and get me, you won't. They might. I hope they do. I said aliens as a joke, <laughs> but every time you're like, this is my favorite, I'm like, it's aliens. <laughs> it always is. Every it's time so I'm like, cute. you get into the theories, you're like, this one's my favorite. I'm like, it's aliens. It's always aliens. <laughs> if I say it's my favorite, it's probably aliens or some kind of whack demon. So <laughs> just know. So um, others think uh, also it's a visitor from another dimension mm. who could have entered this plane through a wormhole or a dimensional gate. Well, so okay. they, and I think that's kind of fun. That's, that's fun. No, I'm into that. That's like same energy of alien, but like alien from this world. It's not yeah. really an alien. But yeah, it's you know like what I more mean. fun. <laughs> Time traveling, dude. Like uh, like everyone from his planet dresses like that and jumps around <laughs> and breathes fire. That's so cute. <laughs> I want to be from another dimension. So. Who says we're not? <gasps> you definitely. <laughs> 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 Who says you are? I say. <laughs> I say. So then um, the next one is a demon, which we talked about it. Mm -hmm. So accidentally purposefully summoned into this world by practitioners of the occult. So okay. a cult, okay, that's, the cult's okay. getting him in there. So, or um, he made himself manifest simply to create spiritual turmoil, just to like mm. mess with people. Like was built, was made from chaos to yeah. cause chaos or the cult thing. I like that. I, I'm yeah. into that as a demon. Like that is actually a very... Uh, solid solid theory as well yeah everyone's like cults and demons are solid and mm -hmm. i'm like yes <laughs> yes mm -hmm. they are i feel like it's more solid than the alien one but even though i do love aliens this is mm -hmm. definitely a solid one so i guess supporters of the paranormal explanations usually refer as proof of their claims that no human could ever have used a gadget to leap the way spring -Heel jack was said to by pointing that out in 20th century, the German army experimented on the subject with disastrous effects. Oh, wow. So, like, they, they like, were actually able... tried to see if it was possible. Yeah. That's crazy. So, like, it couldn't have been human unless, like, you had some other technology further advanced than, like, the German army. I think it's crazy Which, that yeah. there's documentation of that. Yeah. I'm like, wow. why are they testing it just for this bit? Just to see, yeah. if they're, <laughs> see if they can jump as high as the demon. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, allegedly, such experiments gave an estimated 85% rate of failure with broken legs and ankles on the testers. Mm. They conclude that there was no possibility for an individual to succeed where an official warfare project failed, especially considering that the former had preceded it by many decades. It might be worth nothing, but um, there currently is a comparable device being marketed. But this gadget requires modern state-of-the-art state-of-the-art carbon fiber springs. You know it has springs, Logan? Moon shoes! Yeah! Let's go! Ah! So yes, that last little bit was like the paranormal, mm. like, hey, my yeah. vitamin ghosty, which demons are, essentially. Uh -huh. But yes, that was the last theory. But is there okay. one that really like spoke to you? Like what are you thinking? What do you think Ooh. it is? Oh jeez. Oh, the supernatural stuff. Oh, yeah. jeez. Or anything. Do you think it was an actual guy at this point? I, um, yeah, I don't want to give yeah. like a very pageant answer about it, but I think, um, I've said this before, I think theories can be a mixture of all things. Yeah. I think it's possible it is like a demon like from another place, and I could see people trying to be copycats, yeah. and that puts it into a true crime aspect because there's real people doing it. Mm -hmm. Um. And I can also see on the flip side of it is that <laughs> it was originally a real person who was doing this. And maybe the parkour idea I was talking about with yeah. the whole hysteria of the 18th century. And then, um, what was I going to say next? Oh, 
um, and then maybe it manifested more evil to come into the world, you know? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just, I think I, the theories are actually pretty, like, solid explanations. Because usually when we do this, a lot of the theories, there's, like, if there's, like, <laughs> six. We can cross, like, four off immediately. Yeah. We're like, that's weird. That doesn't mm-hmm. explain X, Y, and Z. But, like, most of these are, like, okay, yeah, I can get behind, which I think yeah. is so crazy because I feel like this is one of the most insane cases we've ever done yeah also it's interesting that all of the theories are like more supernatural things Mm -hmm. because i feel like there's always a theory that like oh it could have been a person like the whole time but it's like hard to explain because of the powers like that's where it's yeah logistically it couldn't have been a human at least the entire time this entire like story of this guy which is crazy so it's like you have to think one of the theories is supernatural Mm. (laughs) yeah like i don't get a choice it's like at point (laughs) you have to choose it (laughs) or give me a better answer (laughs) but yes um i think as far as my perspective on it i truly do think it was something cult related and that they summon something i like that one yeah i think it makes a lot of sense because they could summon something truly evil that's like a demon that put people in these crazy fits that like people got scratched and attacked but then they could have also, like, did, like, this devil's work or whatever they did, went on their own and dressed in, like, crazy skins and attacked people to try to, like, get in favor with, like, the demon yeah. or do, like, his bidding. Mm-hmm. So I just think that makes sense to me logistically. Yeah, that's actually really solid. Yeah, um, and maybe they could have benefited something. Maybe they were able to live longer or, like, yeah. something crazy. That's like, like a movie that. in itself, like, uh, anti, like, like a, like a villain trying to, uh, like pursue people to like do his like bidding like in this world and like that's i i really like that one i really liked when you mentioned the summoning part because i was like i could see a group of people accidentally summoning something like that and then feeling like bad about her like they didn't want that to happen because it could even be a group of people who like a normal cult like they're weak or they're vulnerable Mm -hmm. like they are looking for something they can't explain and then they Mm. end up pulling something out of this world like that so yeah exactly so yeah that's the case and i guess what or who was spring Heel Jack really? We will never know. Was it a demon, a paranormal entity, an alien? But I guess the truth behind the evil creature who tormented the lives of those alive in the 19th century will remain a, a mystery. mystery. We changed it up. I know I did. I was like, <laughs> I'll be crazy today. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Yes, thank you. Um, we will see you again for my case. Yes, we will. And then our grand finale of the Christmas special. The Christmas special. special. <laughs> and you guys better listen to the next episode and the, the special. It's going to be so darn great. Yes, I'm so excited. Yes. All right. Mm. You guys have a good night and we'll see you later. Sleep tight. Home slices. <laughs> if you made it this far, this is the gift. Bye. <laughs> Bye.